Our national lead now, President Trump's description of Baltimore offended many Americans, but no one seriously disputes that Baltimore is a city with serious troubles. Recent statistics from the FBI show that Baltimore has the highest homicide rate in the country among big cities, and the Census Bureau shows that Baltimore's recent poverty rate is 22.1 percent, well above the national average. Those are facts that could, of course, be met with concern and empathy instead of scorn and disgust. But President Trump slammed the city of Baltimore as a rat and rodent infested mess. And perhaps forgot that it's also the place where his son-in-law, Jared Kushner's family, owns thousands of apartments. And while Kushner resigned as CEO of Kushner Companies upon joining the Trump administration, he retains financial interest in the Baltimore area properties, properties that, as CNN's Randy Kay reports for us now, have had hundreds of code violations, including for rat and rodent infestation. Maggots, mice, and mold. That is what tenants in the Baltimore area say they have experienced in properties owned by Kushner companies, as in Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law. It's particularly ironic that the president's making these comments when we know here in Baltimore County in 2017 that his son-in-law directly contributed to some of the neglect that the president purportedly is so concerned about today. In fact, back in 2017, Baltimore County found more than 200 code violations by Kushner companies at its various properties, everything from lack of plumbing to rodent infestation. At this property called Essex Park, one tenant told the New York Times and ProPublica back in 2017 that her apartment was infested with mice. She said it was so bad there were mouse droppings everywhere, mice in the laundry hamper and mice in her daughter's bed. The county threatened to fine Kushner companies unless it made the necessary repairs, which Kushner companies did in all but nine properties. The place started to go down. Vanessa Johnson lived in the Cove Village apartments from 2001 until last year. You actually experienced rats. I experienced rats. The rats were in my ceilings. You could hear them walking. And so what was it like to hear rats at night? Oh my God, it was, it was crazy. I could hear them gnawing, but you can't see them, but I could hear it. Um, and, and it just made me crazy. In a statement to CNN, Kushner Company said it invests substantial amounts in the properties and is proud to own thousands of apartments in the Baltimore area, calling it a high-quality residential experience for their tenants. Meanwhile, now a class-action lawsuit is moving forward on behalf of 30,000 tenants, one tenant even claiming paying their rent in full did not prevent them from receiving illegal and predatory notices seeking payment of additional, often illegal, fees under threat of eviction. And the lawyer for the tenants describes these extra fees, Jake, as phantom fees. He says they were essentially made up by the Kushner companies and then passed on to the tenants as charges. Back to you. All right, Randy Kay, thank you so much. Uh, Kushner Companies told CNN their apartments are a, quote, high-quality residential experience, although it doesn't really sound like that. No, no. Uh, you know, you have to wonder whether Donald Trump hasn't had some conversations with Jared over the years. I mean, this is not a new story in the sense that he's had ton Kushner's had tons of, of problems with his properties, um, this long-running lawsuit. And, you know, sometimes it's just interesting to wonder how things popped into uh, Donald Trump's head. But this is so embarrassing that his son-in-law, who is, you know, running a significant portion of the policy agenda, would have uh, this kind of blight on his record. And, you know, it's, it's completely counter to what Donald Trump says he's trying to do for these communities. I mean, the, the writers of this season are really getting lazy, <laughs> I think, for the fact that the president would actually talk about this. And when his own son-in-law, uh, I mean, look, this is the state of uh, urban dwelling for all over the country yeah. for low-income housing. Well, and, and not just in urban places, but there are rural places where folks are on food stamps. They're getting access to public housing. These are deplorable uh, and unlivable conditions for far too many communities. The What really troubles me about what the president is doing, um, and I need not remind him, that he's the president of all of the people of the United States of America. Uh, if, you, if those conditions existed anywhere, it's his obligation, I would think, to direct his HUD secretary 
secretary uh, toward whatever policy uh, changes need to, to happen in order to fix that. But instead, he has decided to pit American against American, city against city, urban against rural, white against black and yeah. brown. And that is what I find sinister and certainly beneath the office of the president. And it's not difficult to find. You can find tweets from President Trump when he was a citizen criticizing President Obama for not doing more to unite Absolutely. and fix up Baltimore because it is a president's obligation as well. One thing that was interesting about the attacks on Elijah Cummings, uh, earlier this year, when Congressman Mark Meadows was accused from North Carolina and a good friend of President Trump was accused of being racist, saying something racist during a hearing, Elijah Cummings came to his defense. Take a listen. You're one of my best friends. I know that shocks a lot of people. And, and likewise, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Yeah, you are. And I would do, and I could see and feel your pain. And actually, just on a personal note, that was like the only nice thing I've seen in politics in the last <laughs> 10 years. Was that, 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 let's that keep replaying. Le yeah, legitimate expression going. of friendship. It's really nice. But uh, Congressman Meadows hasn't said anything about these attacks on Elijah Cummings, but, except he said something to yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, I texted Mark before I came on because I knew you were going to talk about this, and I've been seeing the, the reports on CNN. And Mark... Uh, at told me that I could say what he typed, what he sent to me. He said that, uh, quote, no one works harder for his district than Elijah. He is a pa he's passionate about the people he represents, and no, Elijah is not a racist. I am friends with both men, President Trump and Chairman Cummings. I know them both well, and neither is a racist. And he offered to go to, to, to Baltimore and uh, with President Trump uh, to see what they could do to, uh, uh, to remediate some of the problems that they have there. That right. sounds like a great idea. I, I have to just say, that is so deeply unsatisfying. Having <laughs> watched Congressman Elijah Cummings give yes. a heartfelt yeah. um, admission of friendship to someone who is an, an uh, people do not like in the Democratic Party. Yeah. And he put himself out on a limb in that hearing when, when Congressman Meadows yeah. was under assault, uh, and that's that he could have done the same thing in, in, well, in return, okay. in a human well, way. You can't have heartfelt on Twitter or on a text. Well, I mean, it's, it's harder to do. I don't think it's fair to compare the he two. Did okay, that's, anyway, that's, that's Mark Meadows expressing something. He did. Uh, and it's not nothing anymore.